Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to show you how to color a rainbow rose with Copic markers. You do this with some other mediums too, but this is just in how to do it with Copics. I picked out a rainbow of colors. And what I decided to do was start around the, the rose and try to figure out how to make that rainbow. So I started with my yellow, orange, red, and you can look up on the internet and find what the the sequence of colors is in a rainbow. I always start with yellow. I know that people say yellow is not the first color in the rainbow, but in my world it is because it's my favorite color and that's okay. Now when you're making a circular rainbow like this, you're trying to make all the colors sort of connect, it's a little difficult because you'll run into a place where the colors no longer quite match up. However, don't get hung up on that. I'm just going to kind of try to make the colors match as I go around. So the inside is going to be a yellow green and then I'll move to a green and a blue green. Just kind of swirl that around. I like that big purple petal in the very front. And then I'm just going to carry for fun another one of the pink ones, the red violet ones off on the right hand side. And then these others are going to be kind of a, an orange again, just because the little little rosebud here I'm gonna do in just a variety of rainbow colors and I just colored over top of them didn't really worry about it a whole lot I'm gonna do another layer of color on everything but here I'm just gonna zoom through really fast because you don't need to watch me color all of these little leaves and things but I wanted to have them as a base green I am gonna cut this down so I don't actually need to finish the coloring all the way out to the edges but you get the idea that's what you do when you stamp a full image right and this is a beautiful rose by Penny Black, by the way. Links for all the supplies are in the dupe we do down below. Now I wanna add shading to each one. So I'm gonna put my shading on the insides of the petals. This stamp set has lines drawn by the artist that kind of show you where the shadows are. So I'm going with the darkest colors in there and then working toward the lightest colors on the outside edges. So just kind of moving those colors from the inside to the outside. Sometimes I'll use three colors, sometimes I'll use two. You don't really have to stress out about that either. As long as you have some darker colors in the center, it's gonna give your rose some dimension because you can already see that building in those petals up at the top. I'm using some of the same colors on the yellow that I had for the orange. The, the orange color that I used is the shadow in the yellow section. So you can use some of the same markers as you build around the rose, around the flower. You can also do this, of course, with other flowers too, which would be fun. And then I've got my beautiful teal blue-green uh, petal out in the front. And then we've got our, our the nice blue one. I wanted to push that to be a nice dark blue down there, which was nice. And now I'm going to build up the shadows on the red violet to give that some contrast. And uh, kind of stretch that color out. Doing a little scrubbing to try to make sure I get my blending going fairly well. And then the V09 here is a really dark color for the shadow. You may find that to be too much. You can go for like a V15 or a V17, something like that, if you're looking for a dark purple. There is on my blog, by the way, I will have a link to it in the doobly doo, a, a little color graphic that shows you kind of some rainbow colors if you want to know some suggestions for a rainbow of colors, if that's the kinds of colors that you want for your Copic collection and it kind of has a, a different blending group for each color in the rainbow. So I will hook you up with that. And here I'm adding my green shadows and ignore all of this. <laughs> I kind of stopped before I should. I was so excited about how the roses were coming out. I did not actually finish the greens in the video because I did have to go back in with some more green to blend some of that out because it just came out looking kind of harsh and strange. So I will have that in the photo at the very end of the video. Okay, moving on to what I want to do to enhance this even more, because the rose is beautiful as it is. I'm going to take some of those petals in the center and color them the same way. So I have it kind of side by side so I can follow the same colors. And then I want to do just parts of the, the little bud. So I'm going to do the bud itself. And now that I've practiced underneath, I can sort of figure out how I want those colors to look and how I want them to blend and which ones I want to be more prominent, etc. Because I'm going to cut out both of those sections and glue them on and they'll be popped on the card so I get a little bit of dimension from them. I'll use some power tabs to do the thicker dimension. 
on the stem of this one. You can see where it's stuck to my finger. There's a little bit of adhesive. So it kind of goes from the card and then pops out toward the, the bud. So it sort of lifts up off the page. And then this one is just got a couple of those power tabs on the back. Finishing touches to the car just included fixing those leaves and getting them a little better blended. I cut down the image square, put it on a layer of black, and then on a red card base. And I'll put my sentiment on the inside when I decide what the occasion is that I'm going to send the card for. So thank you so much for spending this quick few minutes of video with me. If you're interested in more videos, there's more here on the screen. You can click on my face to subscribe. There's also a Copic Jumpstart class linked here if you're interested in learning more about Copic markers and coloring. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.